Good afternoon, OC5. Good afternoon. My name is Debbie Rosenbaum, and I am one of the attorneys at Oculus supporting the content and policy teams. And I am Lisa Brewster. I work for the Oculus Store, which means I help developers get their content published to the right audience. Thank you. Thank you. And while we're doing introductions, this is my cat, Alejandro. Uh, my cat's name is Josie Bunny Burrito, which is a family name. Uh, so we're excited to be here today to talk to you about the Oculus Store. In this quick session, we're going to cover some of the content policies you should be aware of before submitting your app, but also what kinds of communities that we want to build at Oculus and how, by working together, we can build new virtual worlds that are both safe, inclusive, and also fun and very meaningful. It is an incredibly exciting prospect, but it is also a huge responsibility. As platforms like Facebook and Instagram have discovered, explosive growth presents serious challenges. As these platforms have expanded, content and what people share and who shares it has mattered more and more. All of these platforms have had to grapple with issues, harassment, hate speech, and the need to establish community standards that address those abuses. Everyone is still wrestling with questions around what should be allowed on the platforms and what their responsibility should be and how we should all share that responsibility. So although by comparison, Oculus and VR as a whole is still in its relative infancy, there are lessons that we can learn from these other platforms. And the fact that our community is still nascent gives us a rare opportunity to preempt some of those issues before they permeate the platform. One of the beauties about virtual reality is that it magnifies some of the most marvelous parts of life. Art, exploring nature, sports, and ultimately, finding new ways to bring us closer together. But without guardrails in place, the virtual world has the potential to mirror some of the darker parts of the real world, like bullying. That's why we're thinking really hard about the type of community that we want to build and are working to ensure that we can maintain really good content and a safe environment, even at scale. So the good news is we've seen other industries proactively take the reins like this in the past. And one of the best examples actually does come from the gaming industry. If you'll recall, back in the 1990s, Congress had convened a series of hearings with plans to introduce regulations, but the major game makers of the day, that was Nintendo, uh, Sega, Acclaim, and others, they came together and hashed out their own solution, establishing something they called the Entertainment Software Ratings Board, you may also understand as the ESRB, to create voluntary industry-wide standards for games. It's a great example of an industry coming together to solve a challenge head on. And we want Oculus to be a thought leader in our industry. And that's why we've collaborated to form a nonprofit trade association of leading XR companies like Google, HTC Vive, Sony, and Samsung to share best practices and get ahead of potential issues. And we're approaching that in a number of ways. First, we've developed our own set of guidelines that apply to all apps and games. Second, our apps also have an international age rating coalition, or IARC rating, and finally, a comfort rating. So first up, we'll talk more about our content guidelines. So we accept all sorts of content, up to the sort of content you would typically see in, let's say, an R-rated movie. A full list of parameters is on our website. The guidelines are both specific and broad. Our goal is to consider each piece of content in a holistic way. We look at the context. We look at the intent. We look at the current cultural and political environment. All of that matters because it shapes our community. So while our store does have age rating, uh, which Debbie's going to talk more about in a minute, uh, it doesn't have age gating or parental control tools. Uh, so if your game has an otherwise approved level of adult or violent content, 
Uh, we want to make sure that when users are just browsing around on the store, that the more extreme content is only seen by the users who are interested in looking for it. Right. So we found that for some people, some people love to be scared and frightened in VR. And some people, uh, for some people, that's their literal nightmare. Uh, and this is the feedback that we get a lot from our users. So we've introduced a separate policy for key art and cover images uh, that you use to market your app within the store. So these particular images can include realistic direct violence, which means uh, like weapons that are connecting with the victim or like a gun who's pointed uh, directly at the camera. Um, it also can include blatantly titillating images. Uh, so if you've done market research and if you've learned that having cover images of dancing girls in bikinis converts really well for your app, uh, unfortunately, you cannot use that in the Oculus Store. So second, as we mentioned, every app that is selected for our store gets a rating from iARC. Um, so each country has this localized rating which iARC will provide. And these ratings give users information that help them make decisions for themselves. So developers, this is really important for you. Oculus will link to an iARC survey during our content submission process. And then that survey will take you about five to 10 minutes. And the ratings are available just as soon as you are done with the survey and will help you give that information to your users. So we're also very concerned about the physical comfort of our users. Uh, and of course, comfort is subjective. Some of us love roller coasters and merry-go-rounds. Some of us get motion sickness when riding in the back seat of a car. Uh, the same is true in the VR space. So we want to tell users what kind of motion they can expect from an app so they can decide whether it's right for them. So we support three different comfort ratings. There's comfortable, moderate, and intense. Uh, apps rated as comfortable or appropriate for most users uh, and uh, avoid too much camera movement or player movement or disorienting effects. Uh, a great example of this is Henry. So like you're like, if you haven't seen the piece of content, like you're stationed in one place and this stuff just sort of happens around you. Um, uh, and then for me, uh, moderate apps that has a little bit of camera effects and, and disorienting um, mission ISS, you're floating, your astronaut floating in space, but it's not you know, too crazy. Uh, but then an example of an extreme uh, intense piece of content uh, in the climb. So you're looking down. You can like, look down hundreds of feet and fall to your virtual death uh, is, is very disorienting uh, with the way that it affects your brain. So uh, if you're not sure within, like, we have more, of course, ex explanations on the website. If you're not sure which one to pick within those three options, just make your best selection. And then we'll have a consultation with you before we publish your app on the store to make sure it's the right one. So we know these guidelines are only part of the equation. VR is interactive, and we want everybody in our community to be part, our partners in making Oculus the safest and highest quality that it can be. So while we've got some basic principles that are non-negotiable, we want to make it easy for you to go beyond that, to set your own norms for contact for what's appropriate in your games and social VR spaces. It means convening in forums like this one to listen to your feedback and to talk through the issues you encounter as you create VR. And it also means encouraging our users to uh, create behavior norms themselves and to report incidents of abuse. So right now, we're working to integrate safety tools across our platform. And we're hoping to roll out an in-app reporting tool so users can report harassment and other behavior that violates our community standards. The reason why we're so passionate about our store and your feedback is because our terms and conditions aren't for us. Well, I mean, OK, they're, they're a little bit for us, but really they're for you, for our developers, and for our community more broadly. So we want to set the expectation that when people come to the Oculus platform, they can and should expect to have a good, high-quality experience. We want people to think that the content on our platform is worthwhile. So. We want to hear what you think. How can our team at Oculus help you set the kind of tone that we all want to maintain in virtual reality spaces? How can we help each other keep our users safe and interested in coming back for more? What do you wish we were doing more of? And what do you wish we did differently? What tools do you wish you had 
to help keep your users safe in VR. Oculus is still very much a work in progress. And as our community grows, we know that there are going to be some growing pains. So we'll adjust our platform accordingly. But there are some things that we do know, some founding beliefs that will be with us forever, like the idea that anyone should feel welcome in VR, no matter what they look like or where they're from. Take Sonia Haskins, AKA Echo Mom, for example. On the surface, Sonia may not seem like your typical virtual reality gamer, but she started playing Echo Arena. Sonia discovered a new passion, and she even lost 40 pounds doing it. For Sonia, VR isn't only a way to relieve stress or blow off steam, it's about the community. Sonia has shared with me personally dozens of stories about the people she's met in VR. The social environment of VR can help people feel welcome and comfortable, but it can only take one or two bullies to ruin an experience for someone. Nobody knows exactly what the future of VR is going to look like or feel like or sound like, but here at Oculus, we want to make sure today that no matter what VR looks like tomorrow, it's always going to place where people like Echo Mom can feel safe and welcome and where every single one of us can belong. Thank you for playing such a big role in building our platform and our community. Lisa and I would love to answer whatever questions you have and continue this conversation sincerely in the chairs back there after this. And please email us and continue the conversation at submissions at oculus.com. We genuinely can't wait to see what you build next. Thank you. Thank you.